Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week simply asks you to find, to identify the next number in the sequence of given numbers, where we have 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 2, 6 over 2, 9 over 6, and 13 over 12. So the way that I'm going to do this, is I'm going to first look at the numerators and then look at the denominators to see if we can find some kind of relationship between all the numerators and then find some relationship between all the denominators. So, okay, first look at the numerators. So what I'm going to do is first consider there must be some pattern in how these numerators are identified because it looks like we're, we're definitely increasing by some number, but what determines the number we're increasing by? Because we go from 1 to 2, 2 to 4, so we skip 2, and then we skip 2, and then we skip 3. So what's going on here? So first, I'm just going to write out all the integers. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, 20, and so on and so forth. So we just have a list of all the integers there. So OK, so first we start with 1, and then we skip 0 numbers, and we go right to 2. And then we skip uh, one number here, and then we go to four. So we're skipping one, going to four. We skip one number here and go to six. So it looks like there's some kind of pattern here, which, as you may or may not recognize, if you're familiar with the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence starts with the numbers zero and one. So we have zero, one, and then we add zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Uh, three plus two is five, and then five plus three is eight and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, we start with skipping zero numbers, which is the first number in the Fibonacci sequence. Then we skip one number, which is the second number. Uh, we skip one number again, which is the third number. And then as you can see here, we're going to skip two numbers then, which gets us to nine, which is uh, skipping two numbers there. So that's the third number in the sequence. And finally, we skip three. So one, two, three. We go to 13 here. So we've skipped five numbers. So essentially, the number of integers that we're skipping is the increasing going up here in the Fibonacci sequence. So we start with skipping 0, then skip 1, then skip 2, and so on and so forth. So we know that for the numerator of the next one, because the next number in the Fibonacci sequence is 8, we know that we need to skip 8 integers. So 1, 2, 3, uh, or the next number is 5. Excuse me, the next number is 5. All right, not 8. The next number is 5 because we just skipped 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we end up at 19 here. So 13 goes to 19. So we know that the next numerator of the next number is going to be 19. And now we need to figure out some pattern for the denominators. So essentially, the kind of the giveaway for the denominators here, I think, is going to be uh, 13 and, yeah, it would be probably 13. Because you notice that the denominator of the 13 fraction is 12. And if you recall, if you're familiar with the Euler totient function or the Euler phi function, we know that phi of any prime number. So the phi function, just be express, expressed as, say, phi n here, is going to count the number of integers less than the given integer, or less than n, that are coprime, or relatively prime, with n. So for any prime number, we know that the number of integers coprime to that prime number is going to be every, every integer except for that number, because it has to be less than that number. So this, just by definition of a prime number, it can't have any the other numbers going into it, other than one in itself. So we know that this is going to be phi of this. So 12 is phi of 13, because 13 is prime. So say that we have some, I'll just note here, say we have some prime number p, so p is prime. Phi of p is just going to end up being p minus 1. So this is kind of our giveaway here, is we have the 13 over 12. And as you can see, these other numbers follow the same pattern. So phi of 1 is equal to 1, because numbers um, co-prime to 1 are going to be 1 here. So v of 2, so numbers less than uh, 2, or less than, or uh, here. So we have 1 and 2, so there's going to be exactly 1, because we're not counting 2. So 1, 1 is kind of the exception to this, is just kind of by definition. So then v of 4, so integers less than 4, so we have 1, 2, and 3. And the ones of these that are co-prime, or don't share any common factors with 4, are going to be 1 and 3. So we have phi of 4 being 2. 
uh, and so on and so forth. So phi of 6 is going to be 2, phi of 9 is going to be 6. So finally, we know that to get the denominator of the next number here, we have to take phi of 19. And since we know that 19 is a prime number, we have this rule over here that phi of p, where p is prime, is going to be equal to p minus 1. So phi of 19 is going to be 18. And if you need kind of a more uh, graphic explanation of why, a graphical explanation of why this is so, you <clears throat> excuse me, can consider all of these numbers here all the way going up to 19 and see, okay, which one, which of these numbers are co-prime with 19 or don't share any common factors with 19. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you test all of these numbers here, none of them are going to go into 19 um, evenly here, um, except for one, 1 times 19 because it's prime. So phi of 19 is going to be equal to 18 exactly. So the denominator of the next number in the sequence is going to be 19 18 And so if you wanted to find the next number after that, you would go, you would skip then eight numbers, you would skip eight integers. So you'd skip eight integers from 19, then take phi of that number, that number which is in the numerator to get the denominator and so on and so forth. So that's it for this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. So for more problems of the week, you can click on our playlist here to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click this link here, and to visit us at centerofmath.org, click this link here. Thank you for watching.